This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Adjuster TV Plus. Okay, so <clears throat> um, I've talked about husband and wife teams um, in a prior video, but I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about whether or not you should team up at all, right? Does it make sense as an adjuster to um, team up with another adjuster or to hire an assistant or have somebody taking part of the workload off of you? And the answer is no and yes. I say no, uh, and it's more like a the circumstances that you're brand new, right? You're a new adjuster and you've never done any of this stuff before. I'm gonna tell you to not team up um, to not hire an assistant, you really need to do all this stuff yourself on your own, right? If you are the, the person with the license, the person with the carrier certification, um, the person who's gonna be the face of the claim, for me, I wanna be able to um, know every single part of this whole claims workflow, and I wanna be able to um, learn it and then start to learn how to be more efficient at each piece of it so that it takes me less and less time to do it and that I identify places where I need to say certain things to the homeowner or contractors um, to help them understand what the next step is, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, and have a spiel, basically, when you, you make your first contacts or you make your settlement calls or whatever it is. Um, how I want my activity diary to look, how I want my photo report to look, um, the sort of the style and of, of my estimate itself, which for me, all this stuff, all three of those things, um, the diary, the photo report, and the estimate all need to be as clear as possible. And they, and they all need to tell the story, back each other up telling the story of the claim, right? So I have a way to, that I do all these things. Um, and then how I interact with my iFirm managers, how I interact with the carrier, QA, and whoever else, right? All this stuff. I wanna get all that stuff figured out as a new person. If I was starting over from scratch, this is what I would, I would systematically learn the job inside and out, and then I would learn how to be really good at the job. And then, that's the no part, right? So that's, I'm gonna do this, it's gonna take me as long as it takes me. Um, and then, through that process of learning how to be more efficient, I'm gonna identify places where uh, there's, if there were two of me, I would be more effective and I would be able to get more work done. And those cases are gonna be, um, generally, for me, in my experience, and what I ended up doing, was to say, all right, well, being out in the field, I'm gonna go to the house, I'm gonna write it up on site, right? That's what I did. And But I also had concurrently phone stuff to do, right? So the phone's gonna ring. No matter how efficient I try to be at like knocking down phone work, there's still gonna be phone things that happen. You're still gonna get phone calls. You're still gonna get texts. You're still gonna get emails, right? From any, from whoever, right? Um, I discovered that for me, the most efficient, effective thing was to hire somebody to sort of take the phone off of my plate in the email and all that stuff so that my voicemails weren't getting stale. Those people were getting called back if they needed to be, which they don't always need to be, right? Um, they may call, you may get a voicemail from somebody saying, um, hey, I got your message about coming out on Thursday at 8 a.m. Sounds great, we'll just see you then. No need to call me back. I mean, you'll get that exact voicemail, right? So I'm not gonna call that guy back. I may text him back and say, hey, I got your voicemail, see you then. And that's it, right? But it takes time and I may have eight voicemails or 10 voicemails. If I'm up on a roof or whatever, you might get a handful of voicemails. Um, I still have to, you still have to call those people back if they need to be called back. Um, if I have somebody else doing that for me, that was the most efficient thing that I found. I know adjusters that, uh, uh, husband and wife teams usually, um, who the guy was the main, the face of the, the claim or the woman was the face of the, of the claim, um, whoever, right? And then the other person sat in the car and the person at the, in, at the house just radioed back, had a little like ear thing and like just a walkie talkie and just radioed back um, the scope and the measurements. And they got really, really, really good and efficient, like hyper efficient doing that. And then by the time he wrapped up doing his scope, he would come out, she printed out the estimate and would hand it out the window to him and then he'd walk up back up to the house and go over the estimate with the homeowner and be done. I mean, that's that's a super duper efficient and effect, really effective way to do it. You gotta be good friends with your spouse, right? And you gotta both really wanna do this work and I think in order for, to make that work, um, but you can, you can do really well doing it that. You can get creative with this stuff and this is the reason why I say no first, right? Because you may say, 
well, Matt said to do this, but actually I, know I did two storms and I determined that it makes more sense to do it this other way, right? And to have an assistant or not have an assistant or whatever it is, right? Make up your own mind about it. Um, it's, you know, the, the second benefit to doing it all yourself first is that you can train another person to do this other part. You can be like, okay, um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be, you know, do the scopes and then my spouse or a, a helper or whatever, uh, somebody who's Xactimate certified, hopefully, um, is going to stay in the truck and write the estimates. I'm gonna train them how I write, I want my estimates written so that my quality stays up here and I'm not, they're not doing their own thing and just making up whatever, right? I wanna have control over that because it's my, my uh, reputation as an adjuster kind of depends a lot on the quality of my work, right? So I wanna be able to know how to do all this stuff no matter which part it is so that I can then go and train um, my helper, my assistant, my whatever, right? And then however you wanna pay them, that's entirely up to you. I wouldn't be doing no 50-50 split. Um, I don't think that's fair to you. Um, could be because you're the one that's, you know, if the claim goes sideways or something goes wrong with it, then it's on you, right? You're the one that's taking the biggest risk. Um, you're the one that's training the other person how to help you. So I would say figure out a day rate or something like, you know, an hourly or whatever. If you're, if you're a spouse situation or your partners, um, that's a totally different situation. If all your money just goes into the same bank account, then what difference does it make, right? Um, but that's, that's a whole other thing. I don't have any opinion on how you should do that other than to say, um, I'm not giving somebody a split of the claim, um, especially if they're only doing like my phone work and stuff like that. I'll, I'll pay what's appropriate for to have for somebody to do that for in any position, right? If they're writing estimates, um, there may be like a per, whatever it is. I don't know if you guys figure it out. Um, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna go too deep on that. I haven't really thought about that because I never really had anybody do that for me. Um, I did try to do like where I split it up with, with adjusters in the, the very, very far past and it didn't work out very well because it's one or the other side felt like it wasn't totally fair and it didn't quite work out. So, but maybe you can make it work out. I don't know. So anyway, I think it's important to, to try to outsource parts of your workflow that you already know how to do and that you can train somebody else to do. So that's why I say, no on the assistant or teaming up at first. Very, like for first, first, I would say first two storms. By the end of your second storm, you're gonna have a lot better idea, like what, how to, the efficiency piece is where you're gonna to start to kind of ramp that part up. Um, and then after that, maybe your third storm or your fourth storm, say, all right, I'm gonna bring somebody on and I'm gonna teach them how to do this one piece because this is the piece that like trips me up and, and takes so much extra time when I could be doing inspections and writing the estimates. I wanna have this person do this other part over here, train them how to do it, and then bada bang, there you go. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.